Welcome to Established Gallery. This is So Says This Tranquil Space, a group exhibition with seven artists. Uh, today we're going to be talking to Bev Crilly about her work, and she's got two pieces in the exhibition, both uh, very beautiful abstract works, and here they are. Bev keeps the studio at the old can factory here. Hey there, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for having me by. Of course. Come on in. The old can factory. Yeah, have you been here? No, this is my first time. There it is. It's official. It is official. Yeah. This is gorgeous. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Alright everybody, welcome to Bev Curly's studio. How much time do you spend in here? Do you just, this is your sacred space? It is my sacred space. I have old, older works here. So this is the, um, the archive? This is the archive. Probably five years old. This one's probably like seven. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting medium. And this one's probably about the same age as that mm -hmm. one. Uh, how did you come to choose this medium? I took a class with somebody who works in oil and cold wax. I loved how you could build up layers and then like scrape away just to like cover and reveal and cover and reveal with such like fluidity. I mean you could do it with acrylics but then it's too it's almost too fast you know so this has like just there's a lovely time of flexibility in there. Because there's so many layers you have to do it on a panel or it'll crack. These are like more exper you know like experiments to test Honestly, I'm unfamiliar with how oil and cold wax, how, how they interact. So let's start over here. Cool. Um, it's wax with solvent in it, so it stays malleable, unlike sort of encaustic, right? Encaustic is hard until you heat it up. This doesn't need any heat, and it stays malleable until it dries. And because the solvent has a faster drying time than straight oil paint. Um, and so I take this, and then it's, it's like Crisco, except, you know, more toxic. Um, and then I mix in, like, whatever oil paint you want. Cheap mm -hmm. paint and expensive paint all mixed together, and then mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about, like, which one you're spending more of, uh, using more And the more wax that you add, the more, the less opaque it becomes, right? So if you're working with a translucent paint, you can make it, like, super glazy, like, by just adding a bunch of uh, wax to it. and so you get the glaze, or you get the sort of translucency, but then you can also texture it by brayering in this sort of thing. Or you know, if, you put, if I put on too thick a layer, but I still I like the color and I don't want it to all go away, I can take you know this sort of paper or you know brown paper or whatever and brayer it on and pull it off, and then I can put what I pulled off onto another painting. So, so I like. You know, I like what's happening here, but it needs to be brighter. Or I like what's happening, you know, like I like how this line shows up. So I find that one thing and then I just sort of keep playing. Like I like how this is happening. Um, and then I just keep going from side to side or place to place and resolving the whole painting around like this little accident that happened. So the two pieces that you have in So Says This Tranquil Space, mm -hmm. um, do you have anything to say about those two pieces? The larger of the two, Scratch, um, I painted, that one's the older of the two. And I painted that one and just kept coming back to like, I want this reveal and I want, I want this quiet, quiet space and then something to pull out of it. Um, and I was really struggling with it because <laughs> um, I sort of, get obsessed with making like the perfect white field, right? Like, but not straight white. Like I want the little different colors and, and marks and stuff to come through. And so then I achieve that and then I look at it, I'm like, you made a white square. <laughs> that's so not interesting enough yeah. to be done. So that's what I did with that painting. And then I was like, I need more. It needs to give me more and I can't figure out what. So then I just took this razor blade and just scratched down and that, pulled up some of that blue and I was like, okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Like, yeah. So then I took an oil stick, which has um, more solvent in it than the paint. And so it gives you, you can pull it with a spatula. I use mostly r &F, and some of them are translucent and some of them are solid. But the, let's see, the translucent ones have, are like 
they have a lot of solvent in them, right? So you get that lovely, lovely color, and then... And you pull it, and so you get, you know, this, like, unevenness, right? And when the other paint underneath it is wet, you end up with like, places where the paint actually sort of acts as a solvent and pulls down, right? So it, like, pulls out the paint that you've been working on, but gives you this sort of really interesting line. So it's more controllable than just pouring solvent on, but it gives you, and it gives you a little bit, a little trace of the color. Um, so I find that really fun. So in that painting, I scraped it down and then added the blue and then, you know, sort of pulled that blue into all different corners of that stripe. And then I used this drywall tape as a stencil and I can extrude paint through it. Because it's wax, it'll set up like that and stay. Things mm -hmm. from garbage and recycles and, mm -hmm. you know. Cereal. Mm. My kids eat a lot of cereal, and the wax bags that the cereal is in is really good. <laughs> One person's trash is another person's treasure. Exactly. And then the yellow um, glide is I just okay. So that paint, that painting has the color yellow that I love so so much, and then it has that super deep like ultramarine bright 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 blue. And I love working. I love that blue, but I find it impossible to work with because I don't. I can't. I'm never happy with whatever color it sits with. Like it's just. It's too much for almost anything, but I love the yellow because it it can deal with it. You know, when you're staring at a blank panel, mm -hmm. uh, what do you do to get yourself in the mental zone to say, "Hey, I'm about to do this"? But when you put these like oil sticks or paint on and all the solvent on the boards, it just like sucks it in. It's so satisfying. So I could like write words or you know just like whatever I wanted in whatever color I wanted because I knew it would be covered up. So some of the paintings have, you know, like letters to myself on them or whatever, and then I just cover them up. And that's what's so liberating, right? Like I don't get that writer's block feeling or like that stuck feeling because it's, I can put whatever I want down. People slide by each other all the time. But if you're involved in some sort of an art project, you can't slide past somebody. Open Studios is an example of when sort of the public and the artists meet, but also the artists and the artists meet. Because you're opening your door, it's sort of vulnerable to let people see your process and like your unfinished work, and you you know, you can polish it up a little bit, but it's still it's still vulnerable. You're still opening yourself. And once you do that, it allows for connection, right? You're not just presenting this like Instagram ready person or object. You're letting people see more and you're reaching out in a way, even if you're not intending to. But people come to art from all different directions. It really does feel like people are just trying to find a way to speak their truth in, you know, this, in whatever their medium of choice. So that's what makes the community of artists so amazing. Do you have any advice for people who might be artists and watching this and thinking like, I'd, I'd like to be more of a part of the community. Right. Do I belong? Yeah, um, I th the answer is yes, you do. Um, and the, the only way that I know to do it, because it's the way I did it, is to just start showing up, right? Like you, you have to be brave and open yourself up. You know, no one's going to look at your work and be like, that's awful. Even though, like, that might be what the fear is in your head, you know. So be brave and put your work out there. Um, there's tons of different community events that you can do it through. And once you do that, it's like I was talking about before, once you're vulnerable in this space, the, you will connect with people. And that's how you start. Like, that's how you build your artist practice in a more community-oriented way. And it's worth it. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. And thank you for inviting us to your studio. You're welcome. Anytime. Um, Bev Curly, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>